Good morning. Welcome to a Thursday morning edition of Mornings with Stanley. It is a, I'm just exhausted. It's just been a week from you know, Saturday having the memorial service for the great Jack Browder and yesterday having the memorial service for and Heiko for the great Cynthia Go Lightly. It's just been an emotionally draining week. I'm just tired, but tomorrow's my day off. So I'm gonna try and get most of my sermon written today and get the screens ready for Sunday and then we'll go from there. Then tomorrow I'm coming home, having a Zoom reunion with my cohort, the best cohort ever, <laughs> Luther Seminary 2019 doctoral candidate um cohort good people in it and good people yeah good friends it's amazing you just spend a few weeks a year with people and all of a sudden you're friends for life it's kind of cool anyway so what else is going on i'm just tired <laughs> can't you tell <sighs> Had a good trip to Heiko, saw some wonderful people. Um, yeah, there's a, one thing that the pastor there who's now the, what, they've done the shoe thing for years um, where they give, they have enough shoes to give every child, um, every school age, elementary school child in Heiko a new pair of shoes and, and around the area. So. Um, I think that was started by the pastor who preceded me, or at least under, while she was there. I shouldn't say by her, but maybe so. Um, anyway, it's great ministry, and Cynthia was very much involved in that. And, and the, the pastor who's there now, um, they had told the conference about it, and the conference came in and filmed, filmed what was going on with it, and um, filmed her. And he showed that video and it was just, it was so moving because it was just, oh my goodness, this is just Cynthia. She was just such a lovely, spiritual, fun, she didn't have her, her sense of humor didn't really show up there, but but her her essence did. And um, the spiritual side of her, which was so, so wonderful. So it was, um, it was really good to see that. I think if there was ever a time, I, I, I'm pretty good about, keeping my emotions at check. Um, so I think at some point you really kind of have to, cause it's not about you <laughs> as a pastor. And um, I do my crying in the rain is what, you know, that whole song. Or <laughs> um, so, so I do my grieving. I don't do, I don't grieve very much publicly, but, um, I, that was a moment that I could have seeing her. And then, um, and then, you know, during the pandemic when they videotaped their worship services, it looked like they had, um, she would come in and do prayers every now and then. And they, he had closed it with her saying a prayer and that's just beautiful. And, um, she's just a great, great lady. And it was a good saw. You know, I enjoyed my time in Heiko. I've, been, I've just been blessed. I mean, I just had a fantastic time in Newcastle and Jean, and then at Heiko, and now at Cleburne. I've just been at turn, every church. It's just been fantastic. Good people. Good, loving people. And got to see so many yesterday. And, um, anyway, it's just, it was really, really nice to see all those people. And <clears throat> it's nice to be invited back to participate in something like that. So um, here's our reading for today. This is Thursday of week 31. I refuse to accept my limitations. Ephesians continues to unfold. For this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, that's Ephesians 1.15. Here, faith and love are connected. They're connected time after time. Timothy has brought us the good news of your faith and love. That's 1 Thessalonians 
Your faith is growing, Second Thessalonians. Wait. I skip the line. Your faith is growing abundantly, and the love of every one of you is increasing. That's Second Thessalonians 1 3. Why are these connected? By chance? No. As cause and effect. The love comes out of the faith. To urge people to love without faith results in futility. Love must have its roots in faith. It is not faith in faith. That makes you strain to have more faith, which makes you have less. It is faith in the Lord Jesus. When you center your attention on him, faith grows with the attention Whatever gets your attention gets you. Your attention centered on Jesus, you begin to love what Jesus loves, and you begin to love with Jesus' love. Dr. Massey, pastor of Tremont Baptist Temple in Boston, past 90 and vigorous, said to the writer, I will pass on to you my philosophy of life. In view of the resources of God, I refuse to accept my limitations. He did not look at his own limitations. He looked at the resources of God. And as he did, so his faith grew. A Belgian government official said to the Reverend Mr. Ganjola, head of the amazing Belgian Congo revival, we've been beating these people to make them clean up and nothing happens. You make them clean up of their own accord. They looked at Jesus and wanted to clean up from within. You look at Jesus and your faith grows, and out of your faith, love grows, and out of the process, you grow effortlessly. The Reverend Mr. Gonjola said, Before the Holy Spirit came, I was so proud I wouldn't greet anyone. Now I love everyone. The Holy Spirit got his attention fixed on Jesus. And out of that attention, love sprang. Love for the very unlovable. Listen. You know, I, this is really good. I have to think about this. That'll preach, as a lot of people say sometimes. Here is our prayer for today. O Holy Spirit, shed abroad in my heart the, the love of God so that I can love what I can't love and believe in people I can't believe in. Then I shall be a constant miracle to myself and others. In Jesus' name, amen. Our affirmation for the day. Faith and love shall be the alternate beats of my heart this day in everything. Jesus is Lord.